Hey students, uh, Mr. Mannix here. Welcome to another lecture on work in simple machines. Today we're going to talk really quickly about the inclined plane. Um, an inclined plane is simply a flat surface that is inclined at an angle and it's a useful simple machine because it can be used to decrease the amount of force we have to apply to move something up to a height. Um, for example, if we are looking at this road here, this is an inclined plane and it would take a lot more force to take something straight from the bottom of this mountain straight to the top than it would to take a uh, lower angle over a larger distance. So again, a ramp, um, you will travel to the same height but over a larger distance, therefore decreasing the amount of force you have to apply. Um, this ramp getting into the back of that car, whether you lift it straight up or use the ramp, you're still lifting it the same height, let's say this is, I don't know, three feet. So the ramp or lifting it straight in without the lamp lift at the same height. However, um, if you use the ramp, you would travel a much longer distance, um, let's say six feet. And that would decrease the amount of force you'd have to apply. Um, remember, a ramp does not change the amount of work you can do. Uh, the amount of work done is the exact same. However, it does decrease the amount of force you have to apply by increasing the distance you have to apply it over. Um, another example of a ramp, if you were going to measure an um, important thing on this, the input distance would be the length of the ramp. So again, this length of the ramp would be your input distance. Your output distance would be the height of the ramp, so this would be output distance. The input force would be, let's say you were um, pushing something up this ramp or rolling something up this ramp. Whatever force you had to apply to push this thing up the ramp, that would be your input force. And your output force would actually be the weight of the object. So let's say you had a wheelchair that weighed, um, with a person in it, let's say 150 pounds your output force would be 150 pounds, but you wouldn't have to necessarily put 150 pounds on, of force on the back of the wheelchair over here to push it up the ramp. Maybe you'd only have to put you know, uh, 20 pounds of force or something like that. You calculate the ideal mechanical advantage of a ramp. Um, the same as uh, most other simple machines by taking your input distance and dividing it by your output distance. So let's go back here really quick. If I were to look at this ramp, the ideal mechanical advantage would be my input, which is six feet, over my output, which is three, and your ideal mechanical advantage is going to equal two. So theoretically, this ramp would double the amount of force, or well, it would cut the amount of force you had to apply to push something up this ramp in half. Um, however, in the real world, it's not going to be as good as this. Why? Because in a ramp, there's a lot of friction. So your ramp is actually going to be a lot less efficient than that. But your ideal mechanical advantage, if there was no friction, would be two. If you had a, um, a box that weighed 10 kilograms, you'd only have to put five kilograms of force on this thing to move it up the ramp but you have to move it twice as far. Um, let's look at another example. If I have a ramp, and let's say my ramp surface is three feet long from one end to the other, and let's say this ramp is one foot tall, then the ideal mechanical advantage of this ramp would equal my input three feet over my output one foot would equal three. So if I had to, to push an object that weighed 30 kilograms up the ramp, so let's draw that on here. Theoretically if this were a perfect ideal machine with no friction I would have to put only a force of uh, 10 kilograms to push it up the ramp. However, again, I have to move it three times further. If I had a much longer ramp, 
let's say one that is five feet long and only one foot high, my ideal mechanical advantage would then be five. And if I were pushing this same box up that ramp, 30 divided by five would equal six. I'd only have to put a force of six kilograms on the box on this ramp, if there's no friction to move it up the ramp. Okay, um, that's it for ramps, but I do want to talk really quick in this lecture about a few other types of simple machines, most of which are simply adaptations of other simple machines we've already talked about. Uh, for example, the wedge. A wedge is really just two inclined planes slapped together. Um, wedges uh, do work in two useful ways. Um, one is it, uh, just like a ramp, decreases the amount of force you have to apply because you apply it over a longer distance, but it also changes the direction of your force. If you hit this wedge down, the wedge is also going to push put a force outwards on this uh, um, log. So a wedge is good for splitting things. So it not only decreases the amount of force you have to apply, it also changes the direction of your force. And this splitting mall down here is the same thing, just a wedge uh, in a different form. Um, a screw, by the way, is also a type of inclined plane. If you look at a screw, what it really is, is a long inclined plane that's slowly wrapped around this, uh, the shaft of the screw, I guess. So again, this would be just one big long ramp that's wrapped back and forth around and around and around um, the shaft of the screw. So it's just an inclined plane. And so what does the screw do? It decreases the amount of force you have to apply, but you have to apply that force over a longer distance. Um, another uh, type of simple machine that we hadn't really talked about is the wheel and axle. A uh, wheel and axle is also used and useful in a couple different ways. Uh, the first of which we all know wheels decrease the amount of friction. So there's a lot less friction um, of a car that's on wheels than a car body dragging across the pavement. So a wheel reduces the amount of surface that's in contact with the ground and reduces friction. Um, the other thing it does is it's actually kind of a type of lever. Um, if you look at a wheel and axle, um, for example, here, um, a wheel and axle is also a lever because you can think of the fulcrum, the pivot point, as being the axle, and the input distance being the distance from the axle to the outside of the wheel, and the input distance is then very small just to the outside of the axle right there. So it increases the amount of force you can apply, just like this faucet. Um, there's a very small pivoting point in the middle, the uh, axle here, and the input distance from the axle to the outside of the knob is a lot bigger than the output distance, which would just be to the outside of the axle. So they increase the amount of force you can apply. So we have wheels and axles, which can reduce friction and also act kind of as a lever. Um, and then finally we have complex machines. Complex machines are machines that are made up of a whole bunch of uh, three or two or more simple machines. For example, uh, this bicycle um, has a wheel and axle obviously in the tires. Um, it has another wheel and axle in the pedal which also is a lever which increases the force that your foot can apply to this thing. It has a pulley in the form of this chain which changes the direction of the force. Um, it has a lever in the form of the handlebars and the brakes up here. It has a wheel and axle in the form of the uh, how the handlebars rotate here. So there's really a whole bunch of simple machines making up this one complex machine which is the bicycle. Um, and then this tank really is just a complex machine made up of hundreds or thousands of simple machines, and so is this lawnmower. All right, so uh, that's our lecture for today. Um, the next one we're going to tune in for is how to calculate actual mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage. Thanks for listening.